All right, we're going to start by selling Russell Wilson here. Russell Wilson right now is the quarterback nine Jeez. overall, which is crazy considering when you watch him, he does not pass the eye test. But he is averaging 19 points per game right now in fantasy leagues. Uh, the defenses that he's played to start the season, get ready for this. The 19th ranked defense, 15th, 12th, and 29th. He has yet to face a top 11 defense. So, it's a fairly easy schedule so far for Russell Wilson. Coming up next, he's playing defenses 7, 18, 14, 8, 13, and 4. So, it's going to get harder. He's going to have stiffer competition from here on out. Not to mention, his worst game of the season came against 12th ranked Miami, where he only gave 14 points. So, when he did face that top 12 defense, he did only have 14 points. That's going to be where we expect Russell Wilson to settle this year for his points per game as the season goes on. Again, it's only been four weeks. A lot can change. A lot changes from the first four weeks to the rest of the season every single year in fantasy football. And one thing that we think is going to change is Russell Wilson is going to be less productive for sure. And honestly, when you're talking about why we're selling Russell Wilson, I think you have to talk about the offense just being completely abysmal. Yeah, it's been it's been horrible. And Jerry Judy, like Jerry Judy, who? Cortland Sutton is outproducing Judy pretty consistently. Javante Williams, obviously, with the injury. I mean, at this point, the Broncos offense is so bad. You have Jaleel McLaughlin. Yeah, who's that guy coming in and being wildly efficient out of nowhere? Like, they're, they're going to bring this guy in and probably utilize him, too, because, I mean, where else do they have to turn? The next guy we're going to have here is, you know, the anti-star of this week. Romeo Dubs is our star of the week. DJ Moore is the anti-star. Prior to week four, 51st in targets, 45th in target share, 86th in target rate, 42nd in receptions, 31st in receiving yards. What did you expect from the worst passing offense in the NFL? This was his first finish as a wide receiver, two or better, and it took the Denver Broncos defense to get him there. If you don't know, since we haven't reinforced this 10 times already this week. But we have. The Broncos defense is historically bad. Really, 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 bad. really, like really bad. One of the worst in the last five years. There's a good litmus test to know how bad the Broncos defense is, is that they got tore up by the worst quarterback in the league. That should tell you all you need to know. Yep. Yep. If the Bears offense sucks against every other team in the NFL and they're good against the Broncos, I think that says more about how bad the Broncos defense is than how good the Bears offense is. And I'm sorry, love DJ Moore, the player. I'm not trying to be rude here. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to be a realist and help you win your leagues. If you can sell DJ Moore and get a guy in a better offensive situation with higher volume, higher consistency, higher target opportunity in general, Please, please do it. Sell, sell, sell. There are so many Bears fans out there. At least it feels like it. I guarantee you that half of you guys, well, not way more than half of you, there's going to be a Bears fan in one of your leagues that's going to want DJ Moore. Please sell it, sell DJ Moore to him. Yeah, I mean, Bears fans are plentiful. And I mean, if you would have told me after the first three weeks that I could sell DJ Moore for something of value, I would be like, abso-freaking-lutely, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. please. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. all out on DJ Moore. Next guy's going to be Najee Harris. This one sucks for us. This one sucks. Yeah, it does. It does. Najee, as a rookie, had 74 receptions. Oh, my gosh. This stat makes me want to die. This year, through four games, Najee Harris has four receptions. And I paused, not only for emphasis and for dramatic effect, but because that pain is literally setting in for all my Najee best ball shares. Four targets in four games. That's one target... It's one target a game, guys. I almost can't even talk. His <laughs> highest finish on the year has been RB17. And it was Sunday when he actually didn't look like the worst running back of all time. It's good for 11 literally, points. He is literally Trent Richardson. And we, t- oh, I should have known. Uh, yeah. That was against the Houston run defense last week, which was dead last in the league. And yes, they are the dead last. And you know what that means? It means they are worse than the Denver Broncos. If I don't care what it is. If you are worse than the Broncos at something defensively right now, that's bad, dude. That's really bad. Najee, if he has any, and he does, if he has any name value left whatsoever, please sell high, 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 high. while you can. If you call 11.3 points per game high, I know this one hits personally for you too because, and it sucks because Najee was supposed to get workhorse 
volume and be more productive because he wasn't injured. And yeah, it just sucks. I guess this is the cost of advocating for a guy in the off season who you didn't even like as a talent, but just liked his situation and the volume that we he should. was probably going to get. We should have, we should have, we, we should have bet against his lack of talent. Like it, we should have gone with our gut. I feel like but, him and Damian Pierce, we should have gone with our gut on. Like we yeah. drafted a fair amount of both yeah. guys and we knew they were both bad. Yeah. Yep. Dang. We were wrong. Gabe Davis. This is three weeks in a row with a Gabe Davis touchdown. We had Gabe Davis as a must-start last week. It paid off. He had a good game, and he is currently the wide receiver, 28 and averaging 13 points per game. If you drafted Gabe Davis at a massive discount going into this season, you were smart. We will give you your flowers because we did the same thing, yeah. and it has paid off for the first few weeks. Yes, it has. Touchdowns are volatile. We say this about all these big play wide receivers that are dependent on those touchdowns and those big plays. So Christian Watson. He is, look, if you can capitalize on Gabe Davis's consistent production over the last three weeks, um, let's see what he does for six weeks without a touchdown. Now, like, I, it, it's, I, it, I think I can it. put it best this way. I have Gabe Davis on some of my teams, dynasty teams. So I'm like, you know, watching in the first quarter. And I I'm like, like him in dynasty. And I'm like, oh, Gabe Davis scored, I just scored like a 40 yard touchdown or what it was, a 35 yard touchdown. Let's go. This was last week. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So, you know, the rest of the day goes on. I'm like, oh, I got to check in on Gabe Davis. That's good. He had a good game. I bet bet he had big. And I looked and he had the same amount of points at the end of the day as he did when he scored the touchdown. Yep. Uh, Look at his his targets and receptions this year. Uh, Week one, four targets for two receptions. In week two, he actually had good volume. He had 21 points, seven targets for six receptions, but then four targets for one reception in week three and three targets. For three receptions in week four. When you're talking about PPR leagues, when are talking about consistency, when we're talking about somebody over the course of the season that we want to depend upon, it is not the guys that are getting limited targets and scoring touchdowns. See Christian Watson last year. Christian Watson is Gabe Davis, but he's newer. And right now with Gabe Davis, we are going yeah. to bet against the volatility that is touchdown and the volatility that comes with drafting or sorry, owning Gabe Davis right now, and we are going to sell him high while we can yeah i completely agree there oh is it my turn no you're you're good we we can kind of go no no no, it's my turn i'll take it all right right. fine all right uh khalil herbert sorry i got talking about give gives uh i promise this is our last bears player although we could literally if you could (laughs) yeah he's not no i know uh (laughs) we we would sell the bears organization if we could but (laughs) i thought khalil herbert was the best running back in the league that's what i was told because you looked at his efficiency metrics backing up david montgomery last year and people are like well, Khalil he's going to do the same thing. He averaged, <laughs> that's what they sound like, huh? Yeah. He averaged yeah. five, five something yards per carry last year, six yards per carry. He's the most efficient back in the league. What are we doing? Why is he, you know, Khalil Herbert is the 22nd ranked running back in fantasy so far. And that's because he had 22 points last week. Yeah. Because he was playing again. Say it with me, Nathan. The, the Broncos Denver Broncos defense. defense. It was close. Yeah. Again, 22 points. He was in RB1 last week, even on 80% of the snap share. Guys, number one, Roshan's going to take this. Roshan's going to take this job. We, we've been confident of that since the beginning of the season, and everything we were predicting it happened is starting to play out. Yes, you can point at the 78% snap share that Khalil Herbert had this week and say, clearly not. However, this was a game where, just to be frank, <laughs> the Bears had a shot at winning it. Yep. It doesn't happen all that often. Yeah. So they gave him workhorse volume. They gave him 18 attempts for 103 yards, and he actually did have 5.7 yards per carry. Clap. Good job. And stop clapping because he's not going to do that again. Ooh. I do think that Khalil Herbert is going to be a sell high because of the matchup he had, because of the volume he got, and because he was so efficient against, again, say it with me, the, the Denver, Denver Broncos, Broncos defense. defense. Let's chill out. Again, this year he's down to 4.8 yards per carry, and it was 4.0 before playing the Denver Broncos defense. He has zero finishes as the top 24 running back before this week against the Denver Broncos defense. Capitalize off of this win. Wait, the Bears lost. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oof. Uh, capitalize off of this performance and sell Khalil Herbert. Man, if you're a Bears fan watching this, you know we love you as they a Bears unsubscribed. fan. <laughs> right. The Bears are catching strays. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Look, with Khalil Herbert, we know that at some point this year, we're not saying he's never going to put up 20 po- 22 points ever again, but it's going to be so inconsistent. You saw this when he was playing with Montgomery. Montgomery was the guy, and then they... When Khalil Herbert was hot for a game, they just kept giving him the ball, and he had a big game. Everyone was all hype, and then he 
did nothing the next few weeks. So that's just how it is with Herbert. Imagine losing to the Broncos. <laughs> Jeez. Cortland Sutton is going to be our next guy. He actually had a pretty decent year so far, has had a pretty decent year so far with performances of 13, 11, 19, and 11. And that's still it's good. pretty mid. Uh, but now take away his three touchdowns through four games, and it's 6, 4, 19, and 4. And we're not in the business of saying if you take away this, take away that. If you take away all the games the T. T. Higgins, Higgins didn't complex. play, he averaged 28 points per game <laughs> when he didn't score 28 points per game. So, look, Sutton's career high touchdowns came in 2019 with six, and now he's halfway there through four games, living on a prayer, and he's going to expect regression. We're going to expect regression. Playing fine. He's playing absolutely fine. He's playing better than Jerry Judy. But look, he It's a we, low bar. <laughs> we that is a super low bar. We've got to sell on on this unexpected batch of high producing players who are so dependent on the touchdowns that they're getting. I'm 100% with you on that. And we're going to look Cortland Sutton, I, I do understand there are going to be people, people out there and say, oh, okay, he's actually playing to his full potential. Yeah, if his full potential is wide receiver 24, then I don't really want it on him. Yeah. Uh, Cole Komet is going to be our last player. Yeah, we told you it was the last Bears player, but that's why Nathan seductively <laughs> That's why I winked at you. Uh, <laughs> one more Bears player here. Uh, the tight end three in fantasy. No way he's the tight end three right now. I'm, I'm fact checking. <laughs> From one game? I am fact checking this. That is how much of a dumpster Dude, fire tight end is. The tight end market is like literally the worst I've ever seen it in it's season. Bad. It is. Really horrible bad. when Johnu Smith is a is a tight end one like you know you're like oh that's bad that's bad I, if somebody I've, how bad is the tight end market in the future it's bad John Johnu Smith a tight end one um bad and Cole Komet, the tight end three fifty six if for you non math people out there that's more than half fifty per six oh wow. For you non-English speakers out there I meant to say fifty six percent of his production <laughs> came against say it with us Nathan the, the Denver, Denver Broncos, Broncos defense, defense. You could title this video "Sell the Bears," <laughs> like legitimately, and it would work. It you would absolutely be true. Yeah. Please, we are we are pleading with you to sell him. He is not going to be consistent. And if you can flip that tight end three label for somebody like George Kittle, who is being frowned upon right now, please do that. Please, you can do it. Sell Cole Komet. Do not buy into this terrible offense that is the Chicago Bears that one more time was playing the, the Denver, Denver Broncos, Broncos defense. defense. All right. I think we need to be done now because I'm sure there are going to be... I mean, we live too close <laughs> we, to Chicago to we, be doing this. We, like lost, they're gonna, we lost 30 subscribers and there's going to be... 50 Bears fans just no Bears fans. You hope I hope you know we love you, but it is the wise thing to avoid your your team for fantasy this year. Like that's that, and and it's great that we get a chance to capitalize on that now at the end. Now that they've had a good game against the Denver Broncos, it's like any time a receiver is matched up against the Colts secondary, we say start that receiver. Yeah, we got to be honest. Absolutely, you have you have receivers playing. If your favorite team's receivers playing the Colts, you got to start them. Colts defense. Sucks. Well, they're secondary. Their run defense is not bad. But all right, that's gonna wrap up our sales video again. If you have Bears players and they're not named Justin Fields, probably selling them. Uh, make sure you drop a like on the video, please, and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Please appreciate that. And make sure you head over to flockfantasy.com slash domain. Use code domain for 30% off the entire site. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and we will see you later.